Welcome back everybody to the Elemental Series our close qualifier. We're here for our last match of tonight. We have Storybud and Minx Gaming. The winner of this game will end up qualifying for the main events that will be happening in a few weeks time. So stakes are high for this one and it's looking to be a super exciting final match. Of course my name is Fede back again with Gavastian in the casting booth. It's looking to be a Really exciting match, got two very solid teams coming into this game, so I really cannot wait. That is true, but I have to tell you one thing. I am not Gavastrian, I am Challenger Mode Man, and I'm here to tell, tell you about my Challenger Mode plan. I am a service that provides great options for tournaments. You can come to me and use me to rank your teams and make sure that you can play the best tournaments of Rocket League and all other types of games. Come check me out at ChallengerMode.com and Okay, go, shoot. Okay, sorry. Challenge remote man just sometimes jumped into the booth and just gets a bit weird. I'm he's gone now. We're good. I'm back. I'm Gavastrian. We have two teams, Minx and Storybud. It's gonna be good. We see Star Storybud again. I I I thought we weren't gonna see them again, but they're here. Yeah, they are here. Um I'm not too surprised considering the run they had. Uh, they ran into Lucky Reapers to begin with, which is a match they should always be taking. And CWMB as well. That one could go either way, but in the end, they pull out the wins, so that's good for them. Whereas Minx, the other side, however, are perhaps a whole nother beast in compared to Story Buds. Uh, for those of you who have been watching the RLCS, Minx actually made it to the fifth and final round of the first group stage in the RLCS regional, uh, where they ended up losing to Triple Trouble, I believe. No shame in that, by the way. Uh, Triple Trouble, after all, did end up winning their first week of the grid, so uh, it's really good for them. Uh, but nevertheless, Minx, you could say perhaps got upset by your mod in the winner's bracket uh, final, the match to qualify into the into the uh, Elemental Series finals. But then they have a second chance. They go up against uh, Story Buds, who we saw earlier, and he looked pretty good against Otter Worlds, even though it was a pretty close game. Uh, but nevertheless, Minx going to be a really tough task for the Story Buds side, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think so. I, I feel with Minx, the players are just of such high caliber, running around the bubble scene for a long time now, especially Mads and Mads Gray. I think they've been playing together as well for a long time, and Tosis is no unrecognizable name by himself, and I think they are going to be playing pretty well. But as I'm seeing, Kieran is joining them, so it's probably Kieran as one of their players and not the one of the ones I've mentioned. So, again, another, uh, like, sub playing here i think yeah i did see mads on uh rocket league recently so um i think they're gonna be playing with their main lineup of mats gray mads and kieran so uh that is uh, good to see for them so they are a yeah as we say probably one of the favorites actually to qualify for the elemental series altogether i believe they were the first seed coming into it and despite that they find themselves in the losers bracket but they are Heavily favored going into this, so I think before we uh, release the teams, um, Christian, give us your score prediction and also the team you predict to win this game. What do you think? Oh, score prediction 3 1 for Minx. I'm going to say, I'm going to play it safe, I'm not gonna bet on the underdog this time. I think Minx is going to take it. We've seen quicker games not really going to game of five uh, to going to game five all that much here on the B stream, so I'm willing to put it on Minx there. All right, I will agree with the team prediction, Minx. I think, uh, I don't think I could give Storybot a game. I'm sorry, I'll have to give it a 3-0 sweep to Minx. Um, even though you could say they quote-unquote underperformed in their uh, winner's bracket match against your Maw, I still think they're the stronger side by far, and so I think it's going to come out here and absolutely smash it. And uh, We will see if they will. We're going to let the teams go now. I believe they are all in and ready. Yes, they are. So uh, we're going to get this one Underway was Minx against Storybud to qualify for the Elemental Series Finals. Let's see what these teams can do. Yeah, let's definitely see what these teams can do. I'm mostly curious to see if we can 
get a bit more team play. I want to see more shorter passes inside the enemy box because that's one of those things that a lot of the top teams are doing. And if you can get that kind of play running, you can get so many goals. And let's see if any of these teams can set up those kind of chances. Yes, as we are getting started here, Matt's getting that early chance off the net, but James gonna have none of it. Now here comes Kieran, gonna try as well down the field. He does get a 50-50, tries to take Rob out of the game. Here comes Matt's great for a chance. Rob's gonna be blocking that one as now Mads. Tries for the back shot, doesn't really get any power on it though. Now Kieran, try to pick this one up. Does have Mads in the midfield to work with. James and Iris are both jumping for that one. So Rob is going to send it down the field, try reset as well as James. He's actually upfield at the moment, trying to get a chance going. I rise, so dropping it into the center for Rob. The ground pinch coming out, but it's way off its mark. So James, another shot going towards the net. He does find it. It's the top shelf. And the underdogs coming out with the first goal. Yeah, and the boomer of a shot, the pinch probably throwing off the defense a little bit with the speed that it went into. You saw Matt's great moving into the corner to try and take control of that ball. It just wasn't, the ball wasn't, by the time he was there, the ball wasn't and a good shot chance there for James. Precision and speed was the name of the game there. And I think, uh, I think for them, it's going to be the big, their biggest stand story. But if they can get those kind of chances and finish them that strongly, they're going to look very good in this team. And wow, already a second goal here. Minx is looking very shaky. Yeah, Madge is losing that 50-50 there, and Kieran caught too far up, and it's just a free shot for Rob. Makes it a little bit more difficult for himself by putting a bar down, but nevertheless, he converts it, so... Strong start from Storyboard, catching out Minx here, but... All the time for Minx to come back into it, as Rob does actually win that challenge there. Matt's great, trying to make a soul play, gets it past I rise in the boot, it's taken out of the skies, it's now Mads following it up, double commit. On the side of Story Bud is now we see Kieran. Can't make contact with the ball there. Max Gray goes to try and take control of it. Gets a pass one eye right, so gonna take it down the right side, getting it into the box. Kieran gonna be picking this one up, looking to lead another attack. As he's on his own at the moment, puts it into the back wall, rolling up. There comes Mads gonna try and drop it down into the box. Rob will be taking this one out. It's now Max Gray. Gonna try to get back into Kieran. Rob pitches it off the side into the middle. But not going to amount to too much as I rise. It does keep control of the ball though. So still continuing this attack off the ceiling. Drops it into the box again. James off the backboard. So now Mads going to be transitioning this one out into attack. As it is actually an open net. Can I convert it? Sadly not. I rise are back in time for this one. Two minutes played now. Yeah, I think Matt's there with a chance for the open net. Just was a bit shocked that it was open. Just the, the scary knee-jerk reaction, because you don't really get those kind of chances very often against a team like this. Even a team that's a, really the underdog here, they're not going to leave those kind of chances open. I love what iRiser and his team, but especially iRiser is doing. The extra kind of movement of the ball that he is doing for his team is creating a lot of space here. And he's going to be the player to watch for this team if he, if they can make something happen. But this is just game one. We've seen it before. Can the big team recover? Well, we'll have to see. Halftime now in the first game of the series. So it's sort of comfortable lead, you can say, for Story Bud. But we see Kieran there trying to thread onto the net. Matt's great into the middle. Easy clear for James down the field. There's now Kieran going to try to put this one up. I rise are trying to interfere with him, but Kieran is going to take this nice and slow out of his own half. Now dribbling it down the field. Has Rob to beat, trying to get onto the net, but will miss the mark. Is now Matt's great coming back in again. Matt's going to try to tap it back to him. Looking for a high touch, James. Nice patient play here. Going to get it out to the side. So I see Kieran. Playing patient here. Iriser with a lot of space to work with. Kieran gonna come and make the save. Now looking to get another touch out. Rob does block him. A chance potentially for Story Boys. Now Mads gonna try to get it out. James on the back boys. Now Matt's great down to Mads, but Iriser again with the block. Is now Kieran looking for this corner read potentially. Puts it off the back wall. And Rob will have no worries clearing that one. No, the the kind of challenges that we're we're seeing here are good and the the extra, like the, the two goal cushion here for, uh, yeah, I, I keep forgetting the name, there's four, four story, but is so solid. And Ming's just, is probably looking for their first goal in here, trying to find, find their way against a team that's playing a bit unorthodox compared to what they're used to. So that might be throwing them off a little bit. And once they find their footing, they can come back into it. You saw this last game as well with Drillers and, uh, and Trappers and uh, Unique Stars, that Unique Stars needed some time to get into it. But once they were there, they started blasting. And I think for Minx, it's going to be the same kind of system for them as well. 
Yes, indeed. You know, when everyone calls game one kind of the feeler game almost, where if you drop the first game, it's fine. I think it's good for Minx to take this chance to see, you know, where they could, you know, carry sort of this play style of uh, Storybug. Because I will admit, yes, it's a bit unorthodox the way they're playing, but a team like Minx is more than capable of adapting to the play style of other teams. So this first game they should use to figure out where they can find some holes in story but as we see james going for another solo play gets a flip reset potentially couldn't find it as so now matt's gonna put, it, gonna put it back down the field i riser with a touch and does actually contest it with kieran as well so we see mads looking for the consolation potentially but rob is up for that in plenty time as the clock runs down a 2-0 victory in the first game story buds take the series lead yeah, and the creativity we're seeing here from Storybuds is something I'm loving right now. The idea of going for a pinch shot here and there, looking for those extra individual plays. Like, first thing that caught my eye for iRiser specifically was the idea that he went, jumped on the ceiling, and instead of doing a ceiling shot or anything there, jumped quickly off it to get that bit of bamboozling touch on the defender to really get a good pass into midfield. Didn't result in a goal, but it did result in a lot of pressure, and it's those kind of extra things that I'm I'm trying to try, trying to and seeing to expect from these players he isn't the biggest on the storyboard but he look he looks good nonetheless if we look at shots taken it's 10 for ming so they have their pressure they have their chances and it's only a seven on the side of story buds so story buds is falling off a little bit i think in the second half and that that could mean bad things for them as Minx is probably a team that has an easy time recovering from a loss yeah, indeed. And with Minx having, you know, more pressure statistically, at least in that game, you know, they'll have some of that momentum going into the next one. And we know that, you know, eventually if they put enough pressure on Storybot, they're going to crack. And it's just a case of finding those quality chances and finishing them off, which they didn't have many of, if at all, in that first game. But Minx trying to start to figure stuff out, you know, you're going to have to make those adjustments against Storybot. Because Storybot, they have that creativity and it perhaps threw off Minx in the beginning because, you know, the fact that Storybot have this creativity behind them, you know, makes their playstyle so unorthodox, it's difficult to read. But now, Minx, they're a smart team, top quality players, they'll make those adjustments going into the second game of the series. As we're now going to be kicking off here, as Minx looking to come back into the series, they may be a game down, but definitely not out of it just yet. It's Kieran taking a slow off the kickoff, Matt's going to send it. Into the side one back into the middle. Max Gray looking for an early goal, but he is shut down as James blasts it to the other end. Kieran gonna have to take control of this. Forces a 50 50. Here comes Rob off the ceiling, and we'll now concede possession to Mads. Getting a flick over one. James last back, gonna send it away. So Max Gray pushing it up. Mads looking for a touch, can't land it. So James is gonna try to slow this one down and gets it over one. Max Gray, though, following it in closely. So that's one that's sent back down the field. Mads now coming in, looking for another touch. Not much boost to work with though. Just going to try bait out a touch potentially. So James does send it back down the other end. So Kieran on the backboard, double touch opportunity. But we know I Rise are a very solid player. He's not going to be missing those. And the first player has come and gone now. Seems like Minx are keeping Soybot at bay so far in this game. Yeah, they're having a bit more control here over Story, but, but they're not out of the woods yet. They they are looking at dominating midfield, but both teams are looking at that like very midfield centric centric play right now. Because neither team has seen the other's goal all that much. Good shot chance, first one of the game, but it is it is a good defender chance because we have people challenging almost every ball here. And I think for Story Bud. They don't have the weakness that we saw with other like teams that are a bit below the mark. And that is the idea that, that when they push the ball up, there's no one there. They have that much, but they do need to like know where to take the risk and where to move back. As if they do not um, fall back fast enough, they're going to be counterattacked. Because Minx is looking for that, is hunting for that, luring the players from Story, but on their half and then just pouncing the other way as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's the way they have been playing so far. Just trying to bait in the players from the opposing side of the story, bud. Um, and we, we're seeing Minx now they're playing a lot quicker, you know, following up each other's touches very well so far. So that could come into play later on if story, bud, are not careful as they have an attack and chance themselves. I rise are with a bit of a strange touch there. James just going to play patient. This one's now Kieran looking for that flick. Can't land it. So Mad's got a double looking to play at center potentially. So he's got the follow up here. Of an awkward ball, I riser 
We'll be taking this for an air dribble. Two players on this ball for story ball. This could be dangerous as Kieran is picking this one up. Has Max Great in the center to work with, but a good touch by James. It might not be enough though. Never mind. I riser with the recovery. Now the infield from Max Great to Mads is off the bar. As now Kieran back into the center again, but no one can risk taking that one. As uh, halfway through this game of Astrid, that's the best chance Mix have had so far. So close, but still amounting to nothing. Yeah, it's an insanely good chance. And sometimes this, uh, these kind of games, looking at this kind of play, makes me almost nostalgic for the old days. Not that I want them back, but just the amount of strangeness that was then. I can remember people being flamed for the fact that they jumped up and flew backwards to try and touch a ball or even look for a double touch. That was nuts back then when this game first came out. That was the kind of tech you just wouldn't expect from people. But now double touches and everything are the norm and even what's needed to get the ball past your opponent and to the other side. The game has changed so much, and if we look back at those old plays, that's now where diamond level is compared to what we are seeing here on this field. Yeah, it goes to show how much the game has developed you know, along the years, how much more sophisticated the level of play is now. And you were seeing here, even at the bubble level, it's just so close and the smallest things making the difference in these games. There's two defenders coming for that one on Storybug, but iRiser again going to be saving them from that one. It's now Kieran coming in for this one, looking for a center. He's got Matt Scree working in the middle as James will cut off the shot. It's now Mads on the backboards, making a bit awkward for iRiser, but he's going to handle that well. Matt Scree now going to push it again. A lot of pressure bowling for Minx. So that's a shot on net. James going to send it into the corner. So iRiser quick to that one, gets a nice little tap at the middle, but no one challenging there for story, bud, and it gives Mads a free shot onto the net. This is one of those moments where, as a caster, I would love to have to boost numbers for these players. Rob and James just really looking... Yeah, they were both completely out of boost. That was the reason we saw that happening. Both of them couldn't challenge it because they just couldn't get out of the net without any propulsion. And that is the kind of choking, uh, kind of play we expect from these insanely high level teams. Yeah, indeed, they got boost off to the point where no one could really challenge that. And ideally you'd want at least someone to die for it to at least throw off the opponent. But it was so difficult for Story Bud there. They just got grinded down and eventually Minx got their chance to score. And now with half a minute left, we do see Story Bud on attack now. Rob getting that 50 win, dropping down to the box. Good read by Mads to get it out. So Rob leaving this one for James. Mads with a good challenge again. I rise now, tapping it down to Rob. Trying to pre-jump it, but that's just an open there. And Max Gray is going to be converting it and securing the second game for Minx. Yeah, Max Gray just looking there and seeing, oh, there's no one here. Okay, I'll just shoot that in, I guess. No one there, no one home, and just an easy stone to throw in there. It's kind of indicative. We, I love the start I saw, I saw here, here, here from Story, but I love the way they were playing. I wanted to give them the one game. Ha! They got the one game. But now, I'm not sure they can finish against the Minx that has figured them out. Yeah, and the Minx seem to have, you know, almost counter strated for the most part, this uh, Story Bud team, so out to Minx for doing that. He did eventually manage to grind down the Story Bud team and stop them from doing anything. And you look at the shooting stats right here, you see it is seven shots to three for Minx this time. We did see it last game, they had more shots by the end of the game, yet it's still lost. But this time they continued that pressure. That's what I wanted to see. Continue momentum into this game. And we see they just grinded down Story Bud to the point where they managed to get that opening goal and then the second goal to secure it. So for Story Bud, it's looking a bit more grim for them now. The, the series may be tied, sure, and it's still sort of wide open, I guess, but Minx do have the momentum on their side at the moment. Yeah, Minx do have the momentum on their side, and it's, it feels like solid momentum. It doesn't seem like the very quick, flashy momentum that teams sometimes get. If they win one, they just look unstoppable and extremely fast. It's solid rotations, knowing where to touch the ball, knowing where to play the ball, just to completely bamboozle your opponent. And especially Mads has been on the forefront of attacks, trying to push the envelope there. And Storybuds now has the, yeah, the onerous task of trying to stop this. Like, how do you stop a team that's reading all your charges? You can't move forward too far because then you'll get challenged. You want to look for a pass, but the passing lanes are almost always blocked. So you need to change something, do something a bit more unpredictable, and also still 
blow, bl like boom the ball forward every once in a while because you want to create space for your team. But this is not the beginning you want in your third game. Absolutely not. Straight off the kickoff. Good straight there from Matt Spray and his eye riser cannot get to it. It's simple as that. And one goal within three seconds for Minx. Already starting this game off the right foot. But sorry, buds. I'd like to see them pull a bit more creativity out of them again. I loved what they were doing in that first game. You know, there was the creativity allowed them for an unpredictable play style. It was difficult for Minx to uh, counter, but I've not seen much of that. Sure, they're playing pretty solid for the most part and keeping up with this Minx team. But you need to pull something out the bag that you know surprises this Minx team. Can't, you know, players like Iris are playing very, very solid and you know being reliable for this team. This needs that little spark of brilliance. And so now advancing into this game, they've got some work to do here as they already find themselves down. Iris are just sending that one down the field, man. So the good read on it. Now Kieran. Blocking out one attacker, Mads now going for the dribble. The Fleck coming out, two defenders committing for an eye riser. Credited with the save and now Rob getting this one out. Kieran, not much boost in the tank, will send it into the opposing corner. Now here comes Mads getting a touch to the centre. Mads great is up for it. It's our eye riser getting a dropping shot. Kieran, good read by him to get to that one. It's now Rob touching it into the corner. Another one into the centre. Now Kieran. Over to Mads, starting a passing play. Here comes Mads Gray forward, the shot puts it under. And what a full team passing play coming out from Minx. Yeah, and such a like a slow shot as well. Both players expecting needing to go up quickly and they just get completely bamboozled. I think that was also a bit of a miscommunicative double commit because the shot didn't come as quickly as they were expecting it to. I saw double commits coming out from the other side in game one, but for now, Minx is just looking in indomitable. They are completely in control, not making any mistakes, looking for perfect passing plays and finishing them off strong as well. So it's it's story, but like we said, the creativity, we need that. We need those extra little moves. Riser needs to show his, his, his sexiness, his special sauce here, because he we need that or else it's going to be too bland for them. And, and Minx eats bland for breakfast and, and poops out glitter because this is just a, an immaculate display from them. Yeah, the kind of display, you know, there's a reason why they qualified for the RLCS, and this is why. The solid play they're showing here, finding each other to each other, this is just excellent play coming out from them, whereas Storybud, they have no response to it so far. As I mentioned, they need to be a little bit more creative and magnetive with the way they play, which we've not seen from them much in the last game and so far in this game. As now seeing Mads taking it down the field, great flick onto the backboard. No one's going to be following it up, though, but two defenders committing for that one. So James hands it over, Matt Scray's got a little bit of space to work with, forces two defenders to die for it again. Iris are going to take his time on this one, really doing a good job buying type of teammates there as James gets beat to it. Rob sends it to the corner, Iris are going to be following it up. So he's got a bit of space to work with again, but Matt Scray just dives onto him again. So Rob gets a pass one, but he's just taken out of the game. It's Matt's again with control. Here comes Matt Scray now, putting it into the sidewall. Iris are going to meet it, backward play, but it's dropping straight down. Kieran reads it well. So Matt Scray trying to find a center. James forces it into the middle. Mads is up for it, shot potentially off net, but Iris will send it to the side. So Rob, we know it's one skill to get it past one, but he won't be able to get it past anymore as that one's blasted in the field. A bit of an awkward touch for James, but in this last minute or so, Glastrin, like, Minx has been pinning Storybud in their own half and they have barely any chances at the moment. It's looking so rough for them. Yeah, and they also seem a bit scared. These demos might finally create some space for them, but they seem scared enough that they do not want to move people forward for those passing plays. They're clumping up in defense. When they are on their own half, they're so close together that no matter what happens, if they, even if they get the ball out, they cannot do anything with it. You get the ball away, yeah, and then what? What What do you do at that moment? Because there's nothing There's nothing to follow up on. You're just going to give the back ball back to your, uh, to your opponent. Get spread out. Get a bit further away from each other so you create creating chances for each other, creating space for each other, because this right now is looking dire for them. Yeah, spacing is incredibly important when you're playing Rocket League, and the way they're playing at the moment, it doesn't matter what they do, they're just going to get the ball sent straight back at them. Like, if they attempt to clear, it's not going to amount to anything, but here comes Mads. What a shot from him. We're going to look at this again. It's on the backboard, you see it, and Kieran... Just puts it down to him and Mads off the back wall. No one expecting that. And 3-0 now, a minute left. Looking like match point for Minx. 
Yeah, and you'll hear play, players say, those kind of shots are unstoppable. You can't do anything against them. How can you stop someone that's on your back wall who's going to get to the ball before you? What do you do? Well, the answer, dear viewer, is get to the previous player. Make sure you put pressure on them before they get in such a good position because that is what is missing right now for story. But they're not challenging up in their man. They're not giving... They're, they're giving too much space to Minx, to the, those players. If they stop doing that for once, they might get something done. But that goal, that was a boomer if I ever saw one. That was quality. 157 on that. My God. God, Rob. Okay, well, he got a bit of help out of that, to be fair. But, Jesus, what a banger either way. It's getting sent straight into the net. So, you know what? Sorry, bud. They at least got that consolation goal. They know. Okay, they're able to score now. But they need to do it more consistently. They can't be letting Minx score this much. Because Minx just have all the space and time to do whatever they like. And you know what? If you're up against a team of the quality of Minx, they're just going to do it anyway. They're like, oh, space and time. I'll take that for sure. So... With 50 seconds left, it's still victory in the hands of Minx. 2-1 up in the series. And looking poised to take it now as Storybud. Up until obviously managed to get a goal, but I'm still not convinced they'll be able to bring it back, to be honest. Yeah, right now, with the way we're playing, if we're looking at these two teams as modes of transportation, um, I would say Storybud is a Fiat Panda, and Minx Gaming right now is a TARDIS. Complete control of space and time. It's just... It's just a mismatch made in purgatory here for them. They are not, they are being too scared. They need to play their chill own kind of style of play because once they were doing that, they looked good. But now they're getting shut out by Minx. They're, get, get, they're cowering back too much and giving too much space to them. Storybot needs to step up. They need to start just throwing caution into the wind and have fun, do their own thing. Stop being that like, meh fiat panda try become the party bus have some fun do some creative plays pre-jump things for all i care but just make it mad make it work and beat minx with a bit of crazy play yeah and i think they're definitely gonna need that um because as we saw from them from the shooting stats 12 shots to one that's just shocking to be honest you know minx being allowed that many chances and to be fair to the story, buds, yes, they scored the one shot they got on target. Good job, but you need more of them, mate, honestly. As we're now going to head into the fourth game, Mads already with the first goal. What a shot off the backboard. Only took him 14 seconds, as easy as that. And any kind of, like, positive note that you can give to your team, being like, okay, guys, we can come back into this, we can do this, we can work through this, it's going to be all fine messed up in one single moment and there goes that confidence that you had i mean i hope it wasn't me i think this was for me a first we had a first today this was the first time i accidentally joined the match instead of spectating wow what an adrenaline rush let's hope sorry bud can use that adrenaline rush to win are you doing your best uh james bot impression i'm guessing I guess, I guess I am for once, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, you can't beat him, imitate him, right? Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, I don't blame you. But <laughs> as we see now, you mentioned the confidence of the side of Storybuds. They're at least getting a bit of pressure now, at least. You know, they're starting to push a lot more. I like how they're just going a bit more crazy, to be honest. You know, just giving it the roll because, I mean, you're 2-1 down. you got to try something new. So why not absolutely go ham? So we'll see how this works out for them a minute past. In this game, 1-0 still to Minx. As I seen, James is booming it over to the side. Contesting it there with Kieran. So I rise it up for this. Light touch. Rob going to follow this one up. It's now Mads with a weak touch. But all it's doing is buying time. Is now Max Gray having to get to this one. Kieran will end up getting the clear instead. As Mads will just clear it down the field. Try by a little bit of time for his team. As now I rise are over one. Trying to dunk Max potentially. Forces him to touch it backwards into his own half, but it will not matter too much, and Mads is there to cover for him. So Mads trying to force a 50-50, trying to make a centre here, good touch and a good chance, but Iriser's shot, shut down by Matt Gray, it is now Matt. Gonna try to get it out again into the corner, James still keeping this pressure up into the centre, Mads now gonna take it to the skies. Sorry bud, having those chances there, that was a really good opportunity for them. Probably the best we've seen in the last few games, if we're being honest. 
And so starting to build up a bit of that pressure, but still need to find the finish of the net. Yeah, and if they if they if they weren't one goal behind, I would be very hopeful with how how they are playing. But getting that one goal is going to be one thing, but getting getting a second one pa past Minx when they are playing like this, it's going to be so hard. They're shutting down any chance we see here right now. There is nothing under the sun that Minx haven't seen from this team, so they are now in complete control. Yes, indeed, is that it's an awkward one for Rob, but I rise. We'll just get the banging clear down the field. So, Kieran, we'll take it past one. Rob's up for it, contests it. As so we see James with a little bit of space to work with, but this booms it up high. I rise are looking for a shooting chance. It was a good effort, but the shot is sent wide as though Rob goes to try to take control. Lays it off for of I rise, and that is a good chance, but Max Gray will be able to save it. So, Kieran. Getting that weak shot off of James as though we see Rob trying to get this one into the center. An awkward bounce here. Looking to keep control of it if he can. Make it so awkward for Minx at the moment, but Max Gray will be able to get it out now. Looking for the flip free set. Don't know if he got it, but he's still making good effort out of it. Rob up for this. Gonna try send it out to so Iris if he can, but James will be the one to get the clear. A minute and a half. Some good pressure. I will admit for Story Boy looking a lot better as Minx will have some pressure of their own at the moment. Yeah, although I like the pressure, the chances have not been very solid. They do not outplay their opponent well enough. They give enough time for recovery on the side of Minx. And if they can start using like bumps and demos, then this pressure can lead to something. But for now, if they are not, if they do not outpace their opponents in defense, then they can never get it past them because they just seem too good of, of defenders. Yeah, indeed, Minx is such a solid team in the defense. We've seen it even with the most dangerous looking of chances. He still managed to block it. And, you know, their defense and rotation is so good that they were able to do that. So you can tell they're a top quality team as we have 45 seconds on the clock. Do or die for Story Bodies. We're now seeing Mads with another chance potentially looking for that flip reset, putting it down off the bar. Could have been goal number two as now Rob's trying to get it down the field, but Iris are just right next to him, doing seemingly nothing with that. As our Kieran has the corner, a bit awkward for James to deal with, taps it into the middle. So Rob takes it past one, it's a two on one situation. Gotta get the bump if you can, but Mads dodges it and will get the block. As I was saying, James trying to take this one down the field, looking for the center. What can he do with it? Going for defenders again, there's trying to bump strats once more, but Kieran just takes Rob out of the game, leaving only two attackers here. So James. Try to get a touch, salvaging anything he can as now Mads has the ball to try to kill all the time off the clock. Ball is still up, but Mads great into open space and to the floor. Minx Gaming qualify for the main event. Yeah, they played so well here. Story Bud showed a lot, showed so many chances. I loved their, like, their gusto. I loved how they were working and i hope to see them again in the next qualifier because of course you can still get in you can still keep trying you showed up pretty big today so maybe you can do it again but minx right now yeah must be on cloud nine they're they're do, doing well because that that was one of the elemental air puns coming back that's not what we're supposed to do so let's bring it back down to the ground and see uh yeah so witness one of the teams that's moving on story but it's heartbreaking in a way because they looked so like uh, like such a fun team and so sad that they didn't make it but you have any other thoughts about this game or about the rest of the tournament that we've seen i've got to say that minx in particular they showed their class in this game uh for sure it was a slow start i will admit maybe a bit you know frustrated by their previous series but they came into it and those last two games just class from them absolutely class and you know that's the kind of team uh, that I wanted to see. So very well done to Minx, absolutely deserved. And they're going to be advancing to the main event along with your more unique stars and drillers and trappers, I believe. So very well done to the four teams that have qualified. Um, overall, Gvashtrin, when we talk about the tournament, was uh, great to cast this. We got to see some high level teams play against each other here. You know, the Elemental Series is a big tournament. And yeah, we've now got uh, four more teams decided for the finals. and. You know, the best part is we're still not done. We've still got two more weeks of qualifying still to go. And then after that, we've got the finals. So super excited to see uh, how the rest of this tournament will progress.
Definitely. The next qualifier is going to be that fire qualifier. And that's going to be, I mean, that's going to be lit as everything. It's going to be that heat not to beat. I mean, the heat do that we've had up here in uh, the Netherlands has been killer. But hopefully that dies down a bit a little bit for us to get back next week for that tournament. Because it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. But with that, of course... I want to thank uh, Tanner's Remote Man for coming by and saying hello. Uh, I hope he stays away now because he's a bit creepy. But with that, uh, I think that was most of the rest of the tournament. Of course, all of the, the leagues that have been helping with this. We had like Templar League doing this one, Slipstream doing it here, who are going to be hosting one of the other tournaments, and of course, Rocket Core. And I shouldn't have started naming them all because then you forget You're one. You're growing. Yeah, I think I, I think I was deliberately throwing there because I didn't know their name. But that's okay. Your throwing is, of course, the fourth group. And thank you very much for that one. Um, any final words for this before we leave it? Um, well, I just got to say, you know, again, thanks to, you know, Tempo Leaks um, and Slipstream for letting me be part of this B stream. Uh, it was great. Of course, thanks to Ashton for joining me for some of these games. Uh, pleasure to cast you as always. And of course, the Stunner Lad for running this very stream, pushing all the buttons behind the scenes and doing a brilliant job at it. And of course, the rest of the staff that have been working on this tournament today, we put on an amazing show and uh, can't wait to see uh, what will happen next week. Of course, if you all want to participate in the next qualifier, um, it will be the Fire Qualifier, as Sebastian mentioned. Next week on Monday, I believe, will be the Open Qualifiers and then Thursday as with this week, will be the close call for us. So you do not want to miss it. And of course, if you want to participate, sign yourself up on the Challenger Mode website. Um, you know, you can find that in any of the relevant discords um, of any of the tournament organizers, I believe, somewhere in the chat also. So I guess that's it from us here at the uh, Slipstream B stream, at least. Thank you all uh, for watching, and we will see you all again next time. Have a good night.